Hey, good morning and welcome to the Socratic Seminar Writing Lab for the Odyssey. And I'm here with Ms. Paulson. And I'm here with Isabel. She says good morning too. <laughs> good morning. Okay, so um, now Isabel, if you have not yet got to 4.6.1, you want to make sure that you get there because that's where the um, you're going to start the, the written part of this module. And remember that for the writing tasks, those have to come in on the day that they're due because they get assigned as peer reviews to other students in the class. So, and this goes for anybody else listening uh, to this podcast. We're going to call it a podcast because I like the idea of me doing a podcast with Ms. Paulson. <laughs> that is what it is. So, um, anyway, what you want to do is create a Google Doc that says Writing Lab on it. And go ahead and submit that in module four up to assignment 4.6.1. Now, remember, that does not excuse you from doing those assignments. That just means that you can get to the writing lab, uh, to the writing prompt, so that you can turn that in on time, and then you can go back and do the work that leads up to that. And we will discuss so a lot of the assignments, so um, you'll be able to actually do a better job on those. Okay, so the reason that uh, we choose the Odyssey, there's a couple of reasons why you're reading the Odyssey. Um, the first is that the Odyssey is considered, it's, it's been around for so long and it's considered kind of a her epic heroic tale. And the purposes of those is to show what every man is like, what every man at his best and what his worst can, can look like. And so when we look at literature, what we try to do is we try to see ourselves in the characters. And Odysseus, uh, it, he's not just, he's, he's the Greek version of this particular character. Um, in Roman mythology, it's Ulysses. So anytime you hear about Ulysses, this is who we're talking about. Um, do you know of any other Odysseus type characters, Ms. Paulson? Mm -hmm. Right. I think even Hercules is, is considered one of these, not maybe necessarily on the same. He may be more... Um, half god, half man, but I believe that Odysseus is full man. Um, the, the, the Greek gods, and for the Roman gods for that matter, were real players, <laughs> especially Zeus, and so the, he had all kinds of, of children of different sorts, but uh, Odysseus is said to be, um, I believe, full human but he's got a lot of great qualities in him and that's why he's a favorite of Athena and Athena is the one who protects and looks over him. The other reason that we look at the Odyssey is because it's hard. It's a difficult text and what you want to learn is how do you get through those uh, those difficult passages and I think the primary reason it's difficult is that it's written so weird and it's a poem and this particular poem was not written down until many years after its creator died and it was um, put forward by an oral tradition and what you have in your book in your textbook is just a few sections which is uh, what is actually a longer work and the thing is this is a sequel so <laughs> The Iliad is even bigger. I think the Iliad is like twice the size of the Odyssey when you put the two together. But um, was there anything you wanted to say specifically about the Odyssey, Ms. Paulson? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Right, including the tro the Trojan horse. Isabel, do you know what a Trojan horse is in our society today? Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's it. Um, in this case, it has to do with computers. And so... Um, there's there's what they're called uh, Trojan horse viruses in that um, when you, it, usually they're attached to an app or an email. And so that when you download it, then it gets into your hard drive and it starts breaking down everything. Um, and uh, that comes from um, the story of the Trojan horse is actually told in the Iliad. Although if you had the opportunity to see the, um, uh, the video of the Odyssey, they actually included that part in it so that people would have background in it. But basically it was uh, Odysseus's idea that if he put his army uh, into this big wooden horse and they were giving it to the Trojans as a gift and they, as a sign of surrender or defeat. And so the Trojans were so happy. They had a celebration. They got drunk. They passed out. And then Odysseus and all his men came out and, and killed them all. So that's why they use the term Trojan horse to review, to, to refer to a um, the virus that gets into your computer and basically destroys the hard drive. Okay. So here is what the writing task will be. And what we want to do is focus our, our review of the Odyssey so that we're, we're getting the information we need for this task. So it's in order to understand Odysseus's characteristics, it is important to understand that he is an epic hero. As such, he displays characteristics that are both heroic as well as human. Write an essay in which you describe both Odysseus's heroic traits as well as his human traits. Be sure to use evidence from the epic poem to support your analysis. So we're looking at the very brave um, traits of Odysseus, and then we're also looking at where he screws up because he is human. And because he's human, he gets himself into trouble. Um, so the heroic traits. What are those characteristics that you believe best demonstrate Odysseus's qualifications to be an epic hero? So, Isabel, what, think of some adjectives that describe the best parts of Odysseus. What would you say he is? Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's help you out here. Um, now, this I actually got from a site. The study is linked here so that you can go to it from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. And they suggested that heroes have 12 central traits. So the first one is moral integrity. Do you know what that is, Isabel? OK. Um, how would you define moral integrity, Ms. Paulson?
Right. Exactly. So, um, Isabel, with that in mind, can you think of, um, first of all, does Odysseus have this characteristic of moral integrity in your opinion? So what can you think of a time who who would he show it to and when might he do that? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, like, let's see, what does he tell his, what is one instruction he gives his men at what, at what point? Um, let, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Trying to find that part because we really want to make sure that we have some um, evidence that that shows us this, the specific point at that. Um, Let's see. Um, I'm looking now at page 663. And he is, um, that's where, where Poseidon is obviously very upset with him. Um, but I don't think that's what I was looking for. Um, of course, he lies to him. That's that's the part where he lies to him. It's kind of, yeah, you know, that's not really moral integrity there. But he does. But I do. I think it's with the cattle of the sun god. I think that's where I we're really looking at. Where is the ca the kettle of the sun god? I should have labeled where all these sections were. <laughs> it's a big piece. It really is. Um, although one of the places, while well, I'm looking for it, one of the places I think of specifically with moral integrity is how he and Penelope are so um, devoted to each other and trustworthy. Although it, I've never understood why Penelope doesn't, she's not with anybody. She puts off the suitors and everything, but Odysseus, he can be with every female goddess there is, and that's no big deal. <laughs> but, um, but he, he remains faithful to her. He's always saying how much he loves her. Let's see. Can you think of one while we're while I'm looking for cattle of the sun gods, Miss Paulson, of moral integrity, a um, a time when he demonstrates his moral integrity? <laughs> yeah. Cattle of the Sun Gods is on 684. <laughs> yeah, I had marked the pages where everything went. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. 
Um, in the small hours of the third watch, when stars that shone out of the first dusk of evening had gone down to their setting, a giant wind blew from heaven and clouds driven by Zeus shrouded land and sea in the night of storm. So just as dawn with fingertips of rose touched the windy world, by the way, that is known as an epic or a Homeric simile, right? Um, because it, it, it is a simile. Well, oh, it's more like a metaphor, but it's describing um, dawn as if it's this, you know, the, the big uh, creature with these fingertips of rose and touch the windy world. We dragged our ship to cover in a grotto, a sea cave where nymphs had chairs of rocks and sanded floors. I mustered all the crew and said, old shipmates. Our stores are in the ship's fold. Food and drink, the cattle here, are not for our provision or we pay dearly for it. Fierce is the God, fierce the God is who cherishes these heifers and these sheep. Helios and no man avoids his eye. Okay, so he, this is where he's showing we, it, we cannot take the sheep that are here because they belong to somebody else. That certainly does demonstrate moral integrity. Um, now, do his men have moral integrity? No. <laughs> this, is the one, well, this is the one time where they, uh, they get hungry and they get a little desperate and, well, let's do this. Why don't we just sacrifice it to this God and, and maybe he'll forgive us. Um, but, and, and, and Odysseus, despite the fact that they disobeyed him, he still supports them. He still you know, says, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try that. Um, it doesn't work. And that's when Zeus um, blows up their ship basically with lightning. So, but you do have moral integrity there in, in Odysseus. Come on, little, oh, there we go. Okay, bravery. All right. I don't think he has bravery. Do you, Isabel? <laughs> where where do you think he shows his best bravery? What would be the best example in your mind of where he shows his bravery? Mm-hmm. The sirens. Right. So if we go to the Cyclops, which starts on six sixty, and um, you're right. He's he's. How does how does he defeat the Cyclops, Isabel? Yeah, and he has to take this huge. Um, it's practically a tree trunk, is what it is. I think it's a palm, um, a palm trunk. Let's see where it is. Um, uh, hey, okay. Where I know I'm close. He seized and drained the bowl. He gets him drunk. <laughs> Another drink. Three bowls. Remember my name. My name is nobody. Mother, father, and nobody. Okay, so he's got to pass out first. And then now, so I'm in the bottom of 665 and starting about line 368. Now by the gods, I drove my big hand spike deep in the embers and charred it again and cheered my men along with battle talk to keep their courage up, no quitting now. Oh, there's a lot you can do with that quote. There's a lot that quote supports in there because it's not just, you know, his bravery, but what else is he demonstrating there, Isabel? What do you think? The cheering. Mm-hmm. Yep. Keeping his men up, he's certainly being encouraging to them. We can do this. So the pike of olive, that's what it was. It was an olive tree branch. 
green though it had been, reddened and glowed as if about to catch. I drew it from the coals, and my four fellows gave me a hand, lugging it near the cyclops as more than natural force nerved them. Straight forward, they sprinted, lifted up, and rammed it deep in his crater eye, and I leaned on it, turning it as a shipwright turns a drill in planking. That would be... Um, we, we don't have much ship experience, so I, I can only imagine what that is. But then having the men below to swing the two-handled strap that spins it in the groove. So they're all working together to get this, um, to blind him. So definitely bravery. Yes. Yes. Am I not? It says I'm, maybe I... Maybe it stopped presenting. No, it says I am presenting. Did you click on, um, if you click on up at the top where it says presentation? Because you've got, you've got the squares up there. Right. Okay. No, I, well, and I see it on my end. I can see my presentation on my end. So, um, not your, Isabel, I'm hoping that, yes. Um, Isabel, can you see the presentation in the meet or are you looking at the presentation itself? Okay. Well, that's okay, because that is, is what's getting um, recorded. Okay. Well, and okay, so let me turn it off and let me show you what, um, uh, okay, so I'm going to present this screen here. So, chair. Okay. Now, so do you see the J and the I? Okay, so when I come back, uh, up at the top, you have the four boxes, and I can just kind of go in between them. One of them says presentation. And so let me go ahead and, and um, I'm going to 